Rakesh here. Uh, hi, Rakesh. Uh Hi, Prateesh. Hey, hi. I'm on mute without anyone. You know? Let's check out the window. Hi, folks. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, e, we can hear you. Hi, Patrick. Uh, Pratesh, will Samuel join this meeting? Pratesh, are you there? It looks like Pratesh is having some issues. Yeah, I'm not sure if Samir is going to join or not. Okay, uh, let's wait for one more minute. I think uh, we have other folks. Simon, Todi. Sorry, uh, I think we can start while waiting for other folks uh, because we have uh, many uh, topics we want to discuss today. Uh, that okay? And uh, since I have some uh, issue on the notary project uh, Zoom count, I cannot use that count to uh, automatically uh, enable the YouTube streaming. So today after this meeting, I will manually copy uh, the recording to the YouTube. So let's get started. Uh, let me share my screen. Here's my screen now. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, the first uh, topic is about uh, 1.0.1 .1 patch release. And we are targeting by end of this uh, month. So basically, uh, tomorrow, Pacific time, is the target date. So uh, here, I list uh, several things we needed to do. Uh, last week, we have the notation Cogo released. Uh, this patch release uh, released based on the world. So uh, notation go uh, updated the dependencies and also uh, so we needed to uh, vote for the notation go for the uh, 101 release then uh, we go to notation CLI 
So for notation uh, go, so maybe uh, Pradesh and Rakesh, you can take a look at this issue since you are the maintainers. So if you agree, you can check the box and uh, then we can trigger the release of notation go. Okay, Pradesh already did that, thanks. Then next, uh, we needed to release notation CLI. We have one PR. This one. So maybe Pradesh or Rakesh, you can take a look. This is a uh, mainly about uh, some error message improvements, um, especially when we missing this reference. Uh, as you know that when we sign an image, right, we needed to put a reference to the image. However, if we didn't put the reference correctly with some uh, combinations, uh, the customer uh, got confused. That uh, That is the reason that we received these comments from our uh, users and the internal users. So we created this uh, uh, PRs by uh, Patrick. And also, we have a, a, another error message improvement previously Pritesh reviewed is about this uh, uh, trust policy. I think also uh, it's a small change. It's also under this PR. So maybe Pritesh or Rakesh can take a look. Is that OK? I, I think uh, uh, hopefully uh, I, I know or uh, now it is a bit late for potential recash. So if you can prioritize this review, that will be uh, very helpful because we also needed to, after this PR merge, we also needed to vote for the notation CLI and also update the dependencies. Makes sense, but we can raise the, <clears throat> the new PR to update notation for dependency, right? We will not even to do that. So we will, need one, we will need one more PR after this. Yeah, we need the one more PR after the uh, review and the merge based PR. Or we can just, yeah, we can raise it before this also, it also works, yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't uh, hear you clearly. We can raise the PR, but the merge order has to be different. We can uh, still raise the PR for updating notation go dependency, but we won't merge it until this PR is merged, the error yeah, message yeah. one. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, uh, Shivay, Patrick, is that okay? We, we can create PR to update dependency in parallel so that uh, uh, also Pritesh can also review that once uh, the above two PRs are merged. Uh, yeah, that works. Okay. Yeah, I think after all the PR merged for the notation, then we will know the what is the right commit that we want to cut for the notation CLI release. Then we will have a vote to confirm from the maintainers. Then we can, uh, after that, we can release notation CLI. Okay, that's the process for the patch release. So we needed to uh, have some work after this meeting and uh, hopefully we can get this uh, 1.0.1 .1 released by uh, uh, October uh, 31, a positive time. Okay, if no further comments, we can uh, move to the next topic. Okay, uh, uh, next actually, one is, yeah. Um, uh, the third and fourth red plan, um, plan for retrospectives and feature updates, those two items were there um, in this section uh, before I put mine. I'm not sure if they're um, more important than my peer comments. Um, who is owning the third and fourth items? And if um, if anyone thinks they are more important, we can cover them first. Uh, thanks, Rakesh. The plan for retrospective meeting, this one uh, was uh, 
written by me. I didn't I forgot to put my name here. Uh, I also, yeah, I would expect uh, Samuel to join uh, because uh, we, we have a, yeah, we have a long time that we, we didn't uh, do this kind of uh, retrospective meeting to see uh, uh, whether anything we need to improve. Uh, considering uh, recently, uh, especially in August, we have a major release, right? And we will soon have a, a patch release and then later on 1.1 uh, release. I think it's, uh, it's a good time for us to do this uh, retrospective to see whether anything we need to improve. And also given the recent uh, uh, some updates that uh, uh, we did in the uh, in the uh, TOC that we submit the annual review, the third bullet that uh, we received the comments, summary recommendations from the TOC members. So we needed to discuss those items to see whether any actions we can take. And also from previous meeting, we we also uh, talked about, uh, uh, Samuel also raised some question about how we can measure the project adoptions and also this is related to the project health to see uh, whether we have a healthy status of growing this community. And also, we also previously have some meeting discuss about, uh, we need to think about our long-term investment and in uh, big, big features that we want to invest. And also we have existing project charter uh, in a requirement format. So maybe we need also to revisit that document to see whether we need to do some updates and to align our goal and the strategy. And also some governance basic. We, we have some, for example, some contributing guides still not uh, uh, merged yet. And uh, we have some other basic government's work to do. For example, like uh, the meeting uh, efficiency and the meeting uh, the host uh, rotation some kind of a basic uh, stuff. So I just want to that collect some ideas that uh, uh, I would like to have this kind of meeting. But uh, since we have uh, uh, some content we need to discuss, right? I want to know how we can organize this meeting to make it more efficient and uh, achieve our goal. Uh, so any okay. comments? Yeah. Yeah, this is not what we are going to do in today's meeting. It's just to do some preparation for the upcoming meeting for discussion. So uh, any comments from the participants today? Uh, and I would also maybe, Pratesh or Rakesh, you can help to bring this back to Samuel to ask him whether he have some suggestions and also some topic he want to discuss. I think this will be significant time. I'm not sure whether, this, should we want, do we want to combine this with the usual meeting or do we want to have a separate meeting for this? I think both, both are okay. Uh, if we see there's a need that we can have a uh, schedule a dedicated meeting for this. I think that is totally fine. Yeah, this is a very good comment. Uh, any other comments from um, Todi, Sajay, Shivei? Okay, uh, so please let me know, uh, maybe offline, any suggestions on how to run this meeting and uh, Pritesh Rakesh, please help to uh, bring this back to uh, Samuel to see whether he has some uh, good suggestions. Okay, and with that we can, yeah, by collecting all the comments then we can start preparation for this meeting. Okay. Uh, then I think, uh, uh, Rakash, maybe you can talk about the sure. blog sign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, since you're uh, sharing the screen already, can you open that link? Uh, 
please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I uh, raised a PR for um, CLS spec changes uh, for arbitrary blob signing. And she had a really good comment on um, how for notation would know the signature format um, of the signature that it is verifying. Um, currently for OCA artifacts, the signature format is coming from the uh, signature um, envelope uh, descriptor. But since there won't be any descriptors in the arbitrary blob signing, uh, this is a problem we need to solve. And uh, the proposal I have here in the comments is uh, piggybacking on the file extension. Um, so we can have something like um, blob signature.sig.cozy or blob signature.sig.jws and, and so on, right? Um, that way we are not modifying the contents of the signature envelope. Uh, depending on an attribute that is outside the envelope to uh, decide which format to use for parsing the signature. Uh, there are a couple of other options as well here, um, like wrapping the signature envelope uh, um, in a JSON format or, a, um, or some other uh, format, like um, two examples I have here. Um, those also work, but um, those are modifying the signature envelope, um, not uh, the internal contents of the envelope, but uh, outside of, outside contents of the envelope. So the file that gets transmitted, um, the signature file that gets transmitted, um, it will have a different format. Um, so the, these are the options, and I'm recommending the recommending going with the extension. I wanted to check if uh, folks have any comments on this. Uh, I have one comment for the. So if we are using this file name. Uh, will notation verify that this is really this uh, COSI format or this is really the JWS format? Uh, this is uh, just a hint for notation, right? Which format uh, um, logic to use for parsing. Um, this is uh, like if the signature envelope itself is in um, some other format, the verification obviously fails and notation complains that uh, uh, the the format uh, is not cozy or not JWS, uh, whatever, right? Um, so this is just a hint, not that um, um, notation will use this particular format um, for verifying signatures. Uh, and this is how the OCI artifacts are being verified today as well. Uh, they, I think they come from the um, signature envelope descriptor, and that can be uh, modified as well. And uh, notation will look at that um, attribute, and if that is not accurately descripting the envelope, it fails. And uh, uh, for using the file extension, this also uh, requires user to put that, right? Uh, this, because we have this output flag, right? So it is the name that the user input, right? Um, by user, you mean the signing user or verification yes. user? Yeah, signing user, they sign this blob and they output this signature. I mean, this signature file name is the input that user need to provide it, to provide, right? So that means you don't I, need to specifically specify this uh, format. Um, so um, user, uh, user doesn't have to provide this format. Um, there, there is a way to solve that. Um, notation sign command can um, 
expect the user to provide a prefix uh, for the signature file and then append the extension. Um, that is one option. And another option is um, um, by default, uh, writing um, the signature to the, um, to the blob file name on which we are generating the signature and appending the extension. Um, there are ways to not expect customers to uh, fully um, write the signature file name and its uh, extension. Okay, uh, I saw Shui and Patrick have those hands up. Yeah, maybe Shui first. Uh, so for extension, I think it's um it's a bit weird because uh, we need to register a lot of uh, uh, extensions. Today we only got uh, Cozy and JWS, uh, but what if later? And uh, oh well, um. So, um, so even if we have Cozy and JWS, uh, what if they have V one, V two, V three stuffs? So, uh, with the uh, extension, it cannot embed a lot of uh information in it. Uh, but I I saw your proposal of using a PEM block. I think that's maybe a better solution. Uh, so uh. That's the begin cozy signature and then the base 64 encoding envelope and then end the cozy signature. Uh, same thing you can do that for JWS. The the good thing for the PEM block is that you can add headers. So that means uh, if later we have V1, V2, V3 or other things, we can embed a header uh, into this PEM block. Uh, for example, we can embed a media type into the header block. Uh, also, uh, just like the uh, X509 certificates, uh, we can have the uh, PM uh, block uh, file, that's, that's the uh, ASCII guarded file. We can also have binary files. And then if we just have binary files as it is for now, uh, I think uh, Patrick has shared a code block that we can magically uh, detect uh, the file uh, by uh, detecting the first uh, first few bytes of the file to see whether it's cozy or it's uh, JWS. Uh, that's by magic code. Yeah, we um, we thought about all these options, me and Pritesh. Um, um, so uh, going um, comment by comment here. Um, so the first thing you mentioned is um, having the versions of Cozy or versions of um, JWS encoded in this file extension, right? Um, as far as I know, the ex uh, the versions of these formats go into the envelope itself, but not um, into the uh, media type uh, field that is present in the um, signature descriptor. Uh, currently, uh, for OCA artifacts, the media type is just application slash cozy or application slash JWS, right? There is no versioning information there. And the versions are actually present in the envelope itself um, of like uh, which versions of cozy or which versions of JWS to um, uh, use for passing the envelope. So I do not think the um, versioning is a problem. Um, so the Second point, um, using this armored um, wrapping, right? Start cozy signature and cozy signatures, the headers and footers. Yeah, this this um, seems like a good option. Um, and also it is um, very extensible to future formats that notation may support. Uh, even I liked this option, but the only con with this is that um, um, now um, notation needs to handle the signature envelope in a text format rather than a binary format. Um, the binary format, I do not think that contains the uh, media type in it, right? Uh, so it, it, the, the, PEM, uh, the PEM format, I think that works, um, even though it is a text field rather than a 
text um, data that rather than a binary data. But for if we if we are going with the binary data, then yes, as you said, we need to dedicate first few bits of the um, binary data to decide which format uh, the the envelope is in. And at that point, now we are uh, building custom format uh, for the signature. And other than notation, no other tools can parse that binary. So there are uh, some interoperability issues there. Oh, uh, I'm thinking another way. So uh, how about this? Just like, uh, so if we have the extension, it's cozy, then we pass it as cozy. If it's database, then we pass it as database. But if it's neither uh, cozy or database, we auto detect them. Uh, how about that? Um, how do we detect them? Uh, is, is that the question you are asking? No, uh, I mean, uh, so your suggestion is to use the uh, extension for the signature format, right? Yes. Yes. So if the extension is cozy, then we pass it as cozy. If the extension is database, uh, we pass it as database. If the extension is not a known uh, signature format, uh, for example, SIG, uh, then we uh, try to uh, pass it uh, automatically by detecting the header, I mean, the detecting the first few bytes. I see. So, so that um, uh, even if the user uh, for, uh, uh, rename their file, we can still uh, verify the signature uh, with a higher uh, uh, possibility. Um, so if user uh, renames the extensions, right? Um, can we throw an error rather than uh, try to like um, dedicate a few bits of the file for this um, format? I'm a bit hesitant to go with the um, um, with the dedicating few bits of the file, right? Because um, at that point, only notation can parse the signature envelopes like whatever the tools that are outside notation that um, can parse JWS signatures or cozy signatures, right? They won't work at all. So we will have to um, like add support within notation. And um, yeah, the interoperability issues um, are major there. That's why I'm a bit hesitant to um, um, have few bits dedicated for media type. Generally, uh, whenever debugging, I just take the um, envelope uh, binary and post them um, to a tool and it passes the uh, signature nicely. Uh, that won't work right. Um, Obviously, it is for debugging purposes, but I think having that interoperability helps. Uh, okay, uh, thanks, Dan. I think the uh, file extension proposal is valid and uh, seems good to me. Uh, actually, I have a question. Uh, since we already have a uh, library in notation corgo that supports to detect the uh, envelope type why don't we use that i have uh pasted a, a code link that's implementing it in notation cli uh okay i need to go through this code link but um on a high level can you explain how it is detecting the media type so notation cargo supports parsing um, the signature uh, bytes. So if you can parse it with cozy, then it's a cozy signature envelope. If you can parse it by GWS, then it's a GWS uh, envelope format. I see. So it is brute forcing um, the 
um, detection. Um, I, I think it works at the moment with just two formats. I'm not sure how, um, how efficient this is going to be as we add more formats. Um, I think we are registering the uh, signature format in addition to Corgo. So if we have a, a third signature format in the future, it will be included in the notation Corgo library as well. And all we need is to add it in the notation CRI side. It's the same for uh, extension, right? If you have another signature format for extension, you also need to add the parsing logic I mean, the parsing the extension logic in notation CLI, right? Um, uh, that is correct. Um, th the thing is, the verification time will increase with brute forcing, right? Uh, let's say there are three formats, and let's say the signature is actually in the third format. Uh, depending on how we are structuring this um, um, media type detection logic, it will first try the first format, fails, and then tries the second format, fails, and then it comes to the, to the third one. So we are um, increasing the latencies there and also a lot of redundant work, right? Um, I think we can do this brute forcing if at all, uh, the file extension is not of the known ones. Uh, like if uh, if extension is cozy, we'll parse it with cozy. If the extension is JWS, we'll parse it with JWS. If it is something else that is not known to notation, then maybe we can fall back to um, this brute forcing method. Does that uh, make sense? So if the signature format is cozy, um, but the user give it an extension of GWS, um, wouldn't that be more work for notation to detect the wrong format and return an, er an error to the user? So think uh, it more, it's... Uh... It's deterministic instead of notation doing it. If user tells me do this, notation does this. It's kind of being more deterministic. If you don't give give any intent to that, notation will go and try to figure it out. Uh, I saw Junjie's hands up. Maybe Junjie, you can uh, share. Um, I want to ask another question. Um, and the, the the signature format is extension. Sounds like a value solution. So, what about the user experience? And who adds the extension surfix? Uh, does the user need to know how to naming the how to name the file? Uh, the extension um, uh, will be added by notation uh, and it is on the signing side, right? Um, so the user of notation sign command, um, they will pick the name of the signature file and notation will write the signature to that file with uh, these extensions. And as these signature files get um, distributed in whatever the medium that um, the um, assigner prefers, uh, these extensions uh, will be carried. Um, so on the verification side, um, I do not expect the users to do anything uh, 
uh, special in order to um, verify these signatures? Um, because we have a, a signature flag in the sign command. So the user uh, sets the file name, but actually uh, we generate the file with a different name where it'll be a little bit confusing, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, uh, you are right. It will be confusing. We will need to update the uh, flags uh, after we take a decision on this. Um, either we are going with extensions or something else, depending on that, the uh, CLA interface will change uh, slightly. Yeah, from what I think is basically it has to be the directory. You can only specify the directory and we will control the name, or at least we will control the prefix for the path. Okay. Sorry, we will control the suffix, not prefix. You have to specify the prefix and we control the suffix, what we add to path. Like either you think of it like this, user can just, we can make sig signature file or signature output or come out flag as optional. If it's not provided, we will write the signature to the same directory. If it's provided, we will write it to the other directory. But yes, we will have to control the name, at least a part of the name. Okay, I see. So the user uh, need to know the, 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 the suffix when they verify the signature because uh, the suffix was added by notation and the user need to know uh, the, the, the actually the, the actual suffix. Okay, I see. Uh, I see your question, e, which one is better, cozy.sig or sig.cozy, right? I was debating that as well. Um, I picked the second I picked the second one uh, because um, uh, for um, normal users, the uh, the word um, after the last dot is the file extension, right? Uh, generally users do not change those things. So if you put cozy.sig, uh, users may keep .sig, but um, change cozy, which affects the verification workflow. Uh, that's why I picked the second option there. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, if there are no questions on this, uh, I will update the um, CLA interface uh, with um, with an understanding that we will go with uh, file extensions for figuring out the media type. Yes, thanks, Rakesh. Uh, I have another question not related to this comment. It's uh, about the uh, signature payload. I think we also needed to uh, update the existing uh, specification, right? Or create a new specification for the signature payload for the block, right? So this affects only the blob signatures, right? This does not affect OCS signatures. Um, so probably we'll have a section somewhere in the um, envelope uh, signature envelope specification uh, to talk about this um, um, uh, this format uh, but I do not think the signature envelope itself or payload in it um, are going to change with this uh, you mean the the payload I, I think the payload the signature payload uh, is a bit different. Right for for the for the blog. Uh, and and also how it it is stored. And let me sh show you. Uh, specification. Yeah, we have currently this signature specifications, right? So, so if user uh, open this, 
they see this uh, the text the description are all talking about OCI, how to store OCI, and uh, uh, this is the manifest. Uh, and then uh, this is also related to OCI. Um, so I think we, we need a specification for how to store the blob. Currently, we, we, we store it in, in the, at the local file, right? And the envelope we didn't change, but the uh, the payload part, uh, where is the payload? Oh, you uh, mean the yeah, payload? Yeah, the, 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 the payload, but we, yeah. We, we also need okay. to define it clearly because it's related to the whole workflow, right? We needed to define it clearly whether we do any changes to uh, to this yes. one and also the annotation yep. part, right? So we needed to yep. maybe have a have another document to talk about the blob uh, signature specification. Yeah, uh, I wanted to start on the CLI side so that I'm um, understanding the um, user experience side of things first. But yes, I will um, raise up here for um, the uh, signature, signature envelope, um, the policy, all of that stuff. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, let's continue. Uh, I think the next one is, uh, uh, Feynman, you have some updates on the features. Feynman. Okay. Yeah. I think I am available to talk about another two items, two feature items marked in 1.1.0. So the first one is regarding the sign local images before pushing to the registry. And another item, another spec is related to plug, notation plugin management. Um, would you mind me, share me sharing my screen so I can share sure. some? Yeah, some information. Okay, let me try to share my screen. Can anybody see it? I'm currently hanging out on the sign local images spec and uh, share the HackMD HEC docs. Anyone see it? Yep. Okay, great. So okay. I'm Sorry. Also we can see the meeting notes one. Yeah, let me paste the stack link in our chat. Also paste to the meeting notes. Uh, e, maybe you can stop sharing uh, so that, okay, thanks. Uh, because the Zoom can accept two people sharing the same time and you need to switch manually. But if there's only one sharing, then it's on the top. How about now, Shui? Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can. How about others? Yep. Yep, I can see the screen. Okay, so I'm currently share the spec related to sign local images. So actually, this was uh, this is one of the feature items in notation v one point one, right? Um, after investigation and uh, uh, POC of this on, on this feature, sign local images before pushing to the registry. We identified the benefits of this feature and also the major scenarios of this feature. We also walked through the, the major scenarios of this feature in our last meeting, right? So I think in this meeting, I think 
uh, we can share the conclusion after we investigated uh, the potential solution regarding uh, those two proposals. So in order to support signing local images before pushing to the registry, we have two proposals that we concluded from our last meeting. The first proposal is to simplify existing feature based on OCI image layout, right? Um, so after investigating on Docker and Container D as well as OCI image layout, we find that um, if we want to achieve the user experience like uh, this section, users only need Docker and notation to finish the local signing experience. We need uh, we need users to switch the Docker engine to Container D in their local environment or in their CICD, CICD uh, run the machine. Since uh, Container D supports OCI, uh, top, supports generating OCI top or in the file system naturally. So we need to rely on the Container D engine, Container D image store to achieve this experience, right? We, we only need uh, three major steps to finish the local signing experience create a local builder and generate a top or sign the local image from the top or and push the signed image to the registry. Uh, I think this experience is ideal, but uh, you know, it relies on um, Docker Container D image store, uh, but, but the Container D image store is still a beta feature in Docker engine and it requires users to switch the Docker engine to Container D. This is a little bit breaking for users to switch the, the content engine. So um, I'm actually share another doc related to how users can switch the Docker image store from uh, content, from Docker engine to Container D. So as you can see from this doc, users will need to update the demo.json in a specific folder and update this file and restart the Docker to take if to make this change take effect. So actually this, this action is a little bit breaking for users, especially for users who are using notation in CICD and automation scenario. So I think the conclusion is that uh, we will, I think I, I would suggest uh, we do not uh, invest, continue to invest, invest this feature in 1.1 but make this feature as a long-term investment. Since um, country we have, we have the limitation on the container D engine. And also uh, the container D engine is a better feature in Docker. If you wanna have a very smooth experience in Docker and also uh, in the sign local image scenario, we will need Docker to support the container D as it, uh, as a stable feature. So in, in other words, I think this feature can be invested and uh, uh, and uh, continue to work on it until Docker supports Container D as a stable feature. I will hang out here for a couple of minutes for others to comment on this idea. Ritesh and uh, Rakesh, anyone else? Any questions or comments on this idea? Or maybe my explanation is not clear enough. I can uh, re I, I can explain it again. Uh, no, at a high level, I do agree with you. If like, if user has to make substantial change in their CI/CD pipeline and production environment, probably they won't adopt this feature. So like investing investing at this time might not be the right thing and we can use it as for like we can mark this as a future improvement and we can work on this. Thanks, Pritesh, for the inputs. Yeah, I think the idea uh investment investment time for this feature based on the continuity engine is that 
uh, I think we can wait for Docker uh, to support the continuity engine as a stable feature. And I think we can also follow up with the upstream Docker community to proceed um, and ask when will Docker move the continuity engine from beta to stable. If someday continuity becomes a stable feature in uh, Docker and it is also default engine, users will be quite easy to use notation and uh, Docker to finish the local signing experience. And I think at that time, we can bring this feature back and continue to invest to this feature. And in 1.1, I think what we can improve is that we can update the document and use the, uh, use the, use the, and remove some uh, redundant, redundant steps like uh, users no longer need to generate a top war with top build X. Oh, sorry, an OCI layout instead of a top war. Users no longer need to generate an OCI layout in their local file system. They can directly generate a top war and use notation to sign this top war. And they no, long, no longer need to untar the uh, top war to OCI image layout. I think we can simplify uh, the experience as we can in the 1.1, but without any uh, coding work. So just to make sure, just to make sure, uh, we will keep this as an experimental feature, but we will do invest. We will invest some effort to simplify the experience here. Yeah, but you want this underlying. Yeah, it like, it, uh, it was still keeping the experimental feature in one point one, but we can improve the signing steps and remove the dependency on OCI image layout. Okay, I see hands up. I I see, I uh, have uh, some from, Pritesh. So, anyone else have any additional suggestions, ideas on this proposal? A uh, payment. Uh, I just want to confirm that uh, we will not do any, uh, coding work. We just provide a document. How currently, user can uh uh try our experimental feature with. Uh, and then there's D enabled, right? Yeah, we will still use container D as a recommendation since you know this is still a an experimental feature in notation. So we will we will update the guide and simplify the ex existing experience based on container D. So we're not removing any functionality, right? Yeah, we, we will not remove any functionality. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, uh, we will not remove any function on the experiment feature. We just add additional uh, document that user, if they configure contender D, what is the experience for them. Uh, the previous one uh, using the uh, OCI layout build X, I think uh, we should also keep keep them there. Maybe user also want to try that one as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We just provide a new approach a new approach for users to sign local images, which is a little bit simpler than the previous approach. And we don't, we will not have any coding, any code work in B1.1 for sign local images until Docker moves the continuity engine from beta to stable. We can continue to invest this feature at that time. So once we toggle it to continuity, Docker save will give an OCI layout, right? So whatever you've shown there will work is what I'm understanding, as long as the we switch the flag. Is, is that what we're saying? Um, yeah, exactly. So uh, in case Docker moves the continuity as the default image store, and uh, it, it is, and in case it is a stable feature in Docker, users will not need to manually 
switch the Docker engine to container D, and they will not have an have a very breaking experience in their signing and image build process. But currently, as you can see, um, I can share this doc link. Users will need to manually update their container engine from from Docker to container D, and it is a little bit a little bit breaking since users will need to manually restart their Docker engine to take effects. Container D supports OCI, supports generating OCI tabboard at this moment. So we want to leverage this feature powered by Container D. Does it make sense, Sajay? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, I think we can move on. I think we all agree that we will improve the document regarding sign local images, but we uh, but will not do any coding work for this feature in 1.1. But in the long term, I think we have been discussed that we can propose integrating notation into uh, Docker and uh, similar image build tools. This is a long-term uh, plan, and we still need further discussion with Docker company folks to align on the same goal. And I guess, Toddy, you are uh, you, you had communication with doc folks, so we can continue to discuss and propose the ideal experience to Docker community. All right, if there is no concerns or questions questions regarding the sign local images, I think we we can finish this this part. So uh, another feature features back regarding the notation plugin management. Uh, as I can, as I see, we have only two minutes left. But I would like like folks to take a look at the open questions that's, that that discussed or uh, left from Samir. But Samir is not in today's meeting, so I would uh, recommend um, notary project maintainers to take a look at those open questions. So we can add comments to those questions. Those, I think those these three questions are the major concerns from Samir. So I think we will need a line on those three design or three questions. And uh, before we design the plugin commands. Is that okay that we uh, discuss these three open questions offline and comment on the uh, open question section. I would like to gather feedback and the opinions regarding those questions, like the uh, installation format, file format, and the uh, uh, notation plugin upgrade, as well as the uh, error handling logic regarding notation installation. So I think we will need more maintainers to uh, get online on those three questions before before we start in implementing the notation plugin management. Uh, one question from my side. Uh, did you answer uh, Samuel's question some well? Maybe Pradesh and uh, Rakesh can help to uh, ask Samuel to take a look. Yeah, I actually answered Samuel's questions in uh, in the comment section, but in order to avoid any files from my side, I'd like to gather more inputs from other maintainers so we can have a uh, majority of approvals on those proposals or those ideas. I already replied, but I expect more maintainers to chime in and uh, give opinions on these open questions. I think. The major concerns from Samir is regarding these three. So I just picked them from the common section into a separate section in this talk. Uh, can uh, you I'll... send the file link, uh, this doc link? Uh, I will forward this to Samir. Yeah, sure. And Rakesh, Rakesh you're also welcome to comment on the 
Okay, habis tu. Okay. Uh, step number one, I think uh, we are one minute over. The last uh, uh, topic is about that. Uh, previously, we discussed about uh, cleaning up this uh, stale PRs or issues. So I would like to start a practice on the Notary Project website. So please uh, let me know if, if you have any comments. Otherwise, I will start to try it to create a dependent board for the stale PRs or issues. Okay, I think maybe uh, once the PRs uh, were out, we can review that one. Okay, uh, I think that's all for today's meeting. Thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank, Bye. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.